Okay, so here's a physics problem involving springs and friction um, and forces, obviously. We have this 2 kilogram weight right here on this 65 degree incline surface and this spring with a spring constant of 360 newtons per meter and a coefficient of friction of 0.22. And we're asked, how much can we pull this spring, like from here, you know, take the string from here and pull it up. How much can we, what is the max amount that we can pull that string and still have this weight right here be unmoved? So, we wanna, let's draw a free body diagram first. So let's say this is the two kilogram weight right here. Um, going straight down is always gonna be mass times gravity. Um, going perpendicular to the surface is is going to be the normal force Hold on, let me draw that at a good size is this is going to be the normal force right here and of course right here is just you know the the combined force the one that's parallel so going like this um, and also we have the spring so we're going to be pulling the spring up so that force is going to go this way and we also have friction and you know usually we have friction going up but friction opposes the the motion usually so in this case friction is going to be an opposing force so yeah that's kind of a small free body diagram but we want force to equal mass times acceleration basically that's the that's what all of these problems are in the force category but since we want this block right here to stay in one space, we want it to be unmoved, force is going to equal zero. Zero, is, zero represents equilibrium, and that's because we're going to have no acceleration. It's not moving anywhere. It's not accelerating. And so anything times zero is just going to be zero. Um, so let's let's see what our forces are. Let's start with the spring because the spring is the only one going up. These other ones are going down. Our spring is going to be kx because um, the spring constant here. I'll write it over here. The spring constant equals f over x. So the force over the displacement. So that's just going to equal. If we want to get the force of that, the force by itself, it's going to equal k x since a few times this by x times this by x get kx and then we have these forces right here this friction one going down and this one right here these are these are the two forces right here opposing this one these aren't really going in the same direction so um, this one's friction right here so if we do friction friction is always um, the coefficient of friction times the normal force so that's and since it's going down, we're going to subtract it. Here, I'll write this right here real quickly. The sum of the forces. So it equals the spring minus mu times the force, um, the normal force. So this right here equals the force of friction. You could just write that as FF if you want, but this, this will give you like a better idea when you're plugging in numbers. Um, and then minus this one right here because these both of these are going in the, the opposite direction we, we're calling this plus because it's going up so minus this one right here and if you just use regular trig and remember this is 65 degrees right here if you use regular trig this is just going to be the sine of 65 multiplied by mass times gravity this right here and that's just you're just using regular trig there's no tricks behind that regular trig functions there um, so that's going to be times mass times gravity equals zero and we can we can simplify this a little bit further let's do kx minus mu times cosine of 65 m times g and cosine of the angle times mass times gravity is almost always going to be your normal force and that's you could just easily figure that out by finding out what this is right here using just regular trig functions SOHCAHTOA um, so minus sine of 65 m times g 
I'll put this right here in parentheses, equals zero. So kx is just, we're solving for x. Remember, we want to find the displacement. How, what is the max we can pull on this spring and have the box stay in the same spot? So kx is just going to be 360x. And that's just, we have k right here and we don't have x. So kx, 360x, um, minus 0.22. That's our coefficient of friction right there, um, times cosine of 65 times mass, which is 2, times gravity, which is 9.8, and then minus sine of 65, sine of 65, um, I'll put that in parentheses, um, mass times gravity, so 2 times um, 9.8 equals 0. So if we want to simplify that even further, um, let's just take these two right here and put them on the other side. So we would add this to the 0 side and add this to the 0 side since they're both um, um, negatives. So it would be 360x equals, and if you go ahead and put that on your calculator, and you put them on this side and simplify it, you're going to get 19.5. And then just divide by 360, divide by 360, you're going to get 0 0.054, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's in meters. If you want to get it in centimeters, you times it by 100, um, and you get 5.4 centimeters. So what does that mean? That means that you can pull on that spring for, f you can hold the spring and then pull for 5.4 centimeters on that spring and that block will still stay at, at where it was in the beginning because it's at equilibrium and the force acting against it is the force of friction. Okay, thanks for watching.